This is probably one of the hottest events of the year as Apple has just unveiled its iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, and Apple Watch. But uh, even though some of the things are hot, not everything is perfect. So I am Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now. And these are our things that we loved about Apple's September 9th event and some of the things that we feel that Apple could have probably done better. Let's begin today with what we liked. Obviously, we get new iPhones, and that's the hottest ticket here. First of all, because this is probably one of the most beloved smartphones in the United States and part of the world, but also because instead of just getting a new design and no spec bump like we usually get, this time we get bigger and better iPhones in every single way. You get 4.7 inches on one, 5.5 inches on the other, and you get a choice. You can pick the bigger or the smaller one. And both phones are actually better than the current models that we have in the iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C. In addition to that, specifications have changed. We get the new AA chip, we get the M8 co-processor that will allow you to get more fitness information as well. You get new displays that actually finally abide to a standard. You get 1080p on the bigger 5.5 inch model and you get a little more than 720p on the smaller one though both of these are retina display standards. You also get new cameras but uh, that's something that we're actually going to talk about on a later segment as we do get the same 8 megapixels but this is not the same sensor. This will be apparently a better one and well we have yet to test it but so far the hottest news today is that we get new iPhones that these are better and obviously we can't wait to have them in our review table to tell you exactly how well they perform compared to everything in the market right now including Apple's existing iPhones. Another thing that we liked about this event is Apple Pay, and you'd say, well, Android's been doing payments for the longest time, and sure they have, but Apple has done it in a smarter way. Instead of just launching a standard out there for people to choose to abide to it or not, Apple has decided to partner with everybody first. So yes, you get American Express, MasterCard, and Visa among major banks, and uh, also retailers, stores, restaurants. All these companies are going to abide and adopt the new Apple Pay standard as of October. October, at least most of them. And uh, it's not just payments. Yeah, sure, you get NFC on the new iPhones and the new Apple Watch and you can just pay with that. And you do get the secure features of Touch ID, which is great. You don't have to be adding passwords, which anybody can steal. But what's most important is that number one, Apple doesn't keep your information. And number two, uh, well, you can actually use the same system for other things. Like for example, you can use this for open table. You go to a restaurant, you order your food and uh, you can pay from the application through Apple Pay without the need to get up and go pay for something or give somebody your phone to pay for things. Obviously, there is a lot here to test. Uh, we have yet to see if Apple has figured things out, but so far, I think the partnerships were probably the smartest way to go. So let's see how that goes in October. Now let's go through a couple of things that we didn't like from this event. Number one, we thought that iOS 8 was going to be launched today, but no, you'll have to wait until September 17th, which is good. You don't have to wait for the iPhone 6 to get iOS 8. That's great, fine. Uh, the problem is that even though you have a bigger canvas on both these new iPhones, the biggest problem is that you still get the same row of icons. And surely, Apple is using this new landscape mode on both phones where you can use the phone in more ways, you can get more information on your canvas, that's fine. But that doesn't change the fact that even though you can rotate the display and get your icons on a different order, that doesn't really use the display any better. And surely, you will get widgets on the notification center, but uh, why not have widgets in front, you know, on the home screen? where they actually matter. Why don't we have some options to use by swiping to the left on the home screen? Uh, sadly, yeah, this is part of what Apple announced in June. Not much could be changed, but we did believe that a bigger canvas on a new smartphone would allow Apple to use it up a little more. But sadly, that's not the deal today. Another thing that we didn't like about this iPhone 6 is mainly the fact that if you want a better experience, you have to buy the bigger iPhone. Meaning, even though both phones are almost identical in design and specifications, you get optical image stabilization, but only in the bigger iPhone. You get a 1080p display, but only in the bigger iPhone. You get better battery life in almost every way, but only in the bigger iPhone. And the problem is that not everybody in this world wants to use a phablet. And 5.5 inches is a very big phone. So if you think of it, why didn't Apple make it a thicker iPhone 6, you know, the regular one? Why didn't they make it a little thicker, which actually the 5.5 inch model is a little thicker? Why didn't this happen to the smaller one in a way to bring optical limit stabilization, to bring the better battery? I feel that people care more about these features than the fact that this phone is just so thin. 
People don't really care about how thin a phone is. People really care about the features that they're getting. And surely, it is important for a phone to be thin. I'm not saying that it's not, but I'm saying that I would rather have a phone be a little bit thicker and give me all the features and then it just be a question of size. You want a bigger or smaller one and not necessarily the fact that uh, you would have to cough up an extra hundred dollars and actually buy a much bigger phone if you want to get these added features. Now let's end today's video with one thing that we are mixed about and that is the Apple Watch, starting with the name, Apple Watch. We haven't heard Apple use the brand Apple in a product in years. I think it's been like 20 years. Odd, we'll probably get used to it. iWatch would have sounded so much better, but okay. There are a couple of cool things here, starting with the design. You get so many options and you can easily change these watch bands with just pressing a button, sliding them out. That is genius. The design is also genius. You get options from stainless steel to 18 karat gold if that's your thing or aluminum fine there are so many watch bands the user interface looks great you get sapphire in the display uh, all these things are great there is a watch for him and her you don't have to put up with it and the user interface looks very intuitive obviously we do have to test it it does look a little convoluted here and there and you know obviously we will have to test it and tell you about it but what are the things that we are concerned about well first of all you'll have to wait until 2015 to get it if you wanted to use it now forget about it 2015 early that is a long time in tech years a long time it would be enough for competing companies to figure something out but then again okay that's the first con the second con is you have to use an iPhone there's just no other way for you to use it and that's actually not a good thing meaning for example there are some Android Wear smartwatches out there that you can now use the storage in order to carry music and not have to carry your smart your smartphone which is great we're still not sure about this with the Apple watch and obviously we would have to check this but uh, probably one of the most concerning problems about this Apple Watch is uh, Apple's not good reputation with battery life. Tim Cook kind of said that it would only last a day and fine, you get wireless charging, that's great. But one day of battery life on a watch is just terrible. Companies need to figure this out. And again, you get great sensors, great fitness tracking, a lot of things are coming with this watch, but uh, that leads me to the question of this video. Uh, what products do you like? What things didn't you like? And what are you mixed about with this Apple September 9th event? Again, we love the iPhone 6. We're not so happy about iOS 8 and the fact that it's not enhanced. And we are still mixed about the Apple Watch, but we will tell you more as we get more information coming soon. That's it for the things that we loved and we hated about Apple's September 9th event. Uh, we will have our editorial roundtable happening between tomorrow and Thursday as our team flies in from Berlin in order for you to get the full opinions of everything that we thought about Apple's new lineup of smartwatches and smartphones. So for now, you can follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the editorial roundtable.